Hello, my gorgeous plant people. Welcome back to Reading Mindfully. My name is Yana, and today we are doing some updates, so stay tuned. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So like I said, today we're doing some updates. I'm gonna do an update on my alocasias because I was asked to do an update on those. I'm gonna do an update on my aglionema propagation as well as some plants that I've been struggling with. And so let's get into it. So the first update we're gonna do is my alocasias just because that one was first. And my alocasias are doing pretty well for the most part. Um, they are all starting to put out growth, if you can see that there. This is the newest point. This is my Alocasia Maharani, still under my Sandy Light. Um, and base, like what I said is under my Sandy Light in front of my northeast uh, door. And it's doing pretty well. And you can see this old leaf here, but it's been maintaining its leaves. What I've been doing is to uh, I've been keeping my alocasias more moist, kind of on the same uh, watering frequency as my ferns. So I don't let these dry out anymore or even get close to dry. Well, I guess I, let, I, guess I let them get a little dry. I water them between a three and a four and it's been um, doing well to help them maintain their leaves. So with alocasias, I'm learning that the, the lighting is really important to grow the leaves but the water is important to keep, to help them maintain the leaves. So I'm learning that the light and the water is really important for these plants. Um, but they are throwing off these corns. And these are the small tubers that you can pluck off and you know propagate to make more plants. And I either need to pot this plant, like have a deeper pot uh, so bump this up to an eight inch pot. Um, even though I don't see any roots coming out, but it's putting out all these corms on the surface of the, you know, the soil. So I need to either, uh, you know, pot it deeper or put more soil on top. But I'm also thinking about just trying to pluck these off and put them into the soil to see if they'll propagate that way. I've never seen someone propagate them into the existing pot. I've always seen them pluck them off and propagate them into another container. So I might just pluck some off and see if, and stick them back in there and see if that'll work because I really don't want any additional, you know, pups or plants of these. So we might try that. The second one is my um, black velvet. Um, and you can see it's putting off another leaf. So soon it'll have four leaves, hopefully. They have been keeping all of their leaves. So right now I have three. And they are, this one was already damaged, um, but they are a huge size. I don't know why mine puts off these really big leaves. I'm not complaining, but look how big, this is the newest leaf. Look how big it is. But every time I see this plant, they have these like cute little cherub leaves, but mine just keep putting out these massive leaves and this is really gorgeous. So I don't know if the new leaf is going to be even bigger than this one, but that would be crazy. This one, I don't know if this one was putting out the corms, but if it is, like I said, I might just pluck. Oh yeah, it is. It has some right here. So like I said, I might just pluck them and see if I can just pop them back in there because otherwise they're just like hanging on the plant. You know, they're attached to the mother plant. And the last one I have is my um, Alocasia Friday. This one's also been doing pretty well. Um, I'm keeping this one more moist as well and I have this little pup here that's putting off a leaf. You can see that it's about to, um, this leaf is about to come out. And then this one is about to put off a leaf. I don't know if you'll be able to see that, but there's a leaf coming out of this one. So hopefully this one will have four as well. And then this one will also grow and it'll be a much fuller plant, but I'm finding that keeping these more moist is helping them to really um, 
you know, maintain their leaves and to keep them under the sandy light as well. But you can see that they're getting really nice leaves, really nice veining. I'm really happy with the growth on these plants. Let me try to show you. So it's looking pretty good. So those, that's the updates on my alocasia. So those are doing well. <laughs> now my aglaonema propagation, I, I think I messed that one up, honestly. I think it was more of a user error and not aglaonema error, but I wanna show you guys. So this is the stump of my um, aglaonema stripes. Now I think this was a user error because as you can see, my soil, it has too much perlite in it. And I think this plant was just entirely too dry, especially to start new life. And so I think what I'm gonna do is repot this to change the soil composition. This is the older soil that I had before where it was more, um, it was too much perlite. So I think this was, this was like 60 to 50% perlite and then the rest soil and that was just, it's too well draining. So I think that was, you know, user, user error and it was my fault for not, you know, keeping the moisture up as well as I kind of forgot to water it after I did that video. Um, I forgot to water it like right after I did it, but um, yeah, I kind of messed that up. And I also chopped my chocolate and this soil was actually in my calatheas and I just put it in there for some reason. I wanted to check on the roots and this one was also dry. So I've been underwatering my aglaonemas and I think that's why they weren't happy with me, but I'm gonna fix this one as well. And so you guys might be wondering, well, where's the top to the, the aglaonemas? What I did was I actually just put them in water, good old water propagation, and I can actually see some activation on the nodes. I'm not trying to make a mess, but you can see like some of the nodes, um, they're a little bumpy, like the roots are coming in. I don't know if you can see that, but you see that like, some of those nodes are really white and bumpy. So I think that's where the, the roots are gonna come out. They're being activated. And so that's why I always prefer water propagating over soil and any other forms of propagating because I have a better chance with that usually. And so I'm gonna keep these in water to see what happens. Um, but let me see, I'm trying to pull it out. See how the, there we go. See how it's like white and bumpy? That's where the roots are gonna come out. So I'm just gonna keep, you know, changing the water of this one and seeing if I can, you know, water propagate the roots. Cause I think I'm gonna have a better, better luck with this one. As well as I also chopped the one that my mom gave me because that one wasn't growing as well. And so the one that she gave me is in here too. So that's the update on my alocasias. Not as great as my, I mean, that's the update on my aglaonemas. They're not as great as my alocasia, but you win and you lose some. Um, I wanted to talk about my asparagus fern, although it wasn't in my video. Um, I did talk about this one in my houseplant tour and this one was just, it was kind of giving me a hard time, but I think now we're on the same page. I did do a lot of um, cutting back on this plant and I've been trying to keep it um, more watered. The, the reason why this one isn't doing as well is because the root ball is really big in this container. It actually has roots coming out of the bottom. It really needs to be repotted, but I, I'm trying to keep this plant on the smaller side, even though it clearly doesn't look like it. If I keep repotting it and putting it in a bigger pot, it's just gonna keep getting bigger and bigger. And so I was hoping that if I kept it in the smaller size pot that it wouldn't get so big, but obviously this plant isn't getting the message. So 
I'm just gonna keep it in this soil. I mean, in this pot, it's in a six inch pot, but you can see how big it is. Um, the thing that I need to do is change out the soil composition. Again, this was one that I had in my older, older soil composition. It has way too much perlite for a fern. These kinds of ferns um, need my 80-20, so 80% soil, 20% perlite. So I will be repotting this one. I don't know if you guys want to see me do a repotting video, but there's some plants that I want to fix up and change out the soil. And this is one of them, but we are getting a lot of, you know, fronds and um, a lot more green because it wasn't as vibrant green as it was in my house plant tour. So it's doing a lot better. And all I just need to do is trim off um, some of these, um, you know, dead pieces from when I was underwatering it as well. It's gotten so big that I had to take it out of the window. So it's now on the ledge in front of the window, but it's too big for the windowsill. So that is what it looks like. So we're doing much better. And then a couple more updates are the, the plants that I was struggling with. I kind of did want to do updates because they, they hadn't really progressed that far, but you know, I might as well just do an update just to show you the progress and then we can keep doing updates if you want or, you know, it's up to you guys. But this is my um, parts of my varicosum. I just chopped this off a couple weeks ago, I think two or three weeks ago, and I just put it in water and it's growing roots. And so I've done this before and I... Varicosum's root pretty easy for me. A lot of people seem to have difficulties rooting varicosum, but they root pretty well in water. So I have two pieces rooting in water. And when they get to about two to three inches, I'll pot them. I probably will put them in the same container, if not in a bigger container, even though um, the container size is kind of big looking for the size of the plant. Someone left a comment on my other video saying that people were uh, potting unnecessarily. And just because a plant looks small on top doesn't mean that the root system isn't big on the bottom. So it's kind of hard for you to just say, looking at a plant that you put it in a big pot because you have to take into consideration what the root ball size is. And so when I look at the bottom and I see roots coming out or in my moisture meter, when I stick it in there and there's pushback, you know, when it gets hard to put the moisture meter in there, that's when I know I need to repot. So I look for two things. I look for difficulty in checking the soil, and then if the, so and if the roots come out of the bottom, that's when I need to repot. So when you look at plants, you can't just say automatically that you put it in too big of a pot because you have to look at the root ball. And that's what's happening to my varicosum, and that's why it got underwatered and it just shriveled up. And I also need to do it to my melanocrysum because that one is also having, the, um, that one also needs to be repot as well. But I'm gonna take you to my infirmary area where my other plants are coming back. All right, so in my infirmary area, we have some plants that I was working on. This was my philodendron um, mammy. And as you can see, I had chopped the top off of it. And this one was in an eight inch pot. I did go ahead and downsize it to a six inch pot. I wanted to downsize it further, but the root ball was too big to fit it into a four inch. So I had to put it in a six inch. Um, but you can see that it's putting off growth here and then growth here. So, so far so good. It is doing really well. And I'm glad that it's, you know, been activated. This is my, uh, Sodoroy affinis, as you can see that growth point there. And we have a little bit of uh, root action there. So I don't know why I put it in this pot. I do need to move it into another pot or set it on, you know, soil, set it in some soil in another pot because I don't want these two in the same pot. So I'm not sure why I did that, but yeah, I just stuck it in here and it's starting to root. Um, 
And then here's my mammy. I need to just combine these two. So I might do end up doing that, but as you can see, my mammy, um, I had this rooting in water. The roots got to be about two to three inches, so I potted it. And now it's putting out this growth here. So I'm looking forward to seeing this one sprout. And the leaf, this is what the leaf looks like. It's not the best looking, but it's helping it to grow. So I'm leaving it on there. This is my philodendron squamacaulay. The outer sheath had um, split because I was putting it outside. And the only, there's hardly any information on this plant. The only video I've seen on this plant was stating that this plant might actually grow better in cooler temperatures. So I was sticking it, putting it outside and the sheath started opening. And so that's why the sheath isn't there. So maybe this will sprout now. There's a, another view of it. Um, I, don't, I can't even tell if it's getting longer or not because I've been looking at it every day. But if you guys think it's, it's getting longer and progressing, then I'll believe you. But <laughs> that's just what that one looks like. All right, so this is the other portion of the varicosum. And as you can see, it's starting to sprout here. So I'm gonna cut off this extra stem here. Um, and then there's some other sprout on this side, but so this one's sprouting and so this one will be a full plant Once it comes back. All right, so there's a closer view of that you can see the growth and There's one down in there So this will be a nice plant once it's all potted up in the same container and I'm going to check the root ball to see if it's okay, but it should be fine since you know, it's putting out new growth. I just want to make sure that it's not too root bound. So that way I won't have the same issue that I had before. All right, guys. So there you have it. Those are some updates on the plants that I was working on. Like I said, some of them were propagation videos. Others, I just said I was going to update you guys. And so most of them are doing pretty well. I have um, having little sprouts and new growth. And some of them didn't turn out right, you know, with the aglonemas. That could be my fault. It could be the plant. One never knows, but hey, everything doesn't work out at the way you want it. So to have some good growth is better than everything dying in my book. So as always, I just want to thank you guys so much. I hope you guys enjoyed the updates. I'm getting um, close to doing a houseplant tour. I'm actually really nervous because a lot of my plants are getting big and we're not even in summer yet. I haven't even moved my plants outside and I'm just, I'm really nervous for the summer and the plant growth as well as I was kind of tempted not to put my plants outside this year just because everything is like getting bigger as it is but i already told you guys i was gonna put my plants outside and so i want to follow through um the thing i'm um deal trying to think of is if i want to propagate before i put out my plants outside or if i just want to put them outside and then just deal with the fallout <laughs> you know at the end of the summer and i'm thinking about just you know going with the ladder just because i don't want to have a billion cuttings in the house you know, while I'm waiting, that just doesn't sound good to me. So I don't know, right? You guys let me know what I should do. I don't know if I should just propagate everything so it's like maintainable and then, I don't know. You, I'll show you the house plan tour and then we could talk about it. But anyway, I just wanna thank you guys so much for watching my videos, liking and subscribing, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.